Welcome to another edition of Arrows and Incense. My name is Bill Olson, and uh, I get the privilege of uh, spending some time with you. Hopefully, what we bring forward is a help to you and encouragement. Um, Arrows and Incense is all about the intercessor, uh, things that God has taught me and the guests that I've had on the show to um, help you, to empower you, to do what God has asked you to do. Um I'm excited this morning that uh, I get to have a special guest on. He has a lot to share. He's uh, he got a wealth of information. Um, his name, I'll just tell you, this is he. Casey Brost is our national prayer strike director uh, for Canada. He works with us at the Canadian Firewall Harvest Ministries all across the nation. He is married to one wife. Yeah, that's what he told me. Father of his own children, which is good, lover of God, walks in the prophetic uh, apostolic anointing of an intercessor, has done exploits for the kingdom of God, and humble besides. And uh, he was the leader for KC and the Sunshine Band uh, a long time ago. And uh, not only that, I can, he, he's my friend, at least on the good days. So please welcome KC. <laughs> Hi, KC, you look good today. Look, you were on quite a roll there, but it is um, it is good to be back on the program or YouTube. I don't even know how it goes out, but it's good to be on this. We need to do this more often, but um, Absolutely. I'm excited what God's going to release through us today, Bill, and uh, God is on the move and we're on the winning team, so it's good stuff. Absolutely. I don't know. I'm going to start calling you KC now. Just put the emphasis on the wrong syllable and, and it changes, right? Um. 
you know, uh, the last while it's it's been pretty amazing. You know, like last year, uh, you led thirty. It was thirty days straight in Quebec, right? Prayer yeah. strikes and yeah. often twice a day, sometimes more or whatever. Uh, that's incredible. You know, like the longest set of meetings I ever did was three weeks, and I almost died after that. You know, morning and 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 uh, well, after. Yeah, mornings and evenings, and oh my goodness, I did. <clears throat> I used to travel around stirring up churches, and I used to do all the worship leading, all the preaching, and then pray for everybody in the building. And then when I was done, I would just, there would be nothing left. But, uh, you know, uh, just, I, I'm just amazed. Uh, I shouldn't be amazed. Because God answers us, but uh, but how God uses you, it's it's uh, it's it's awesome to watch, and and I love how uh, how you flow and uh, how you hear the Lord. But uh, I was just thinking about this this morning when we were on our way out to Saskatoon, we were going to do um, an RRA event out there slash Battle for Canada. We wanted to, we felt that God wanted us to go there and deal with some things, you know, and 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 contend for the family's right to be able to raise their own children. And so you went there with a the team before us, and you were there for, I think, about a week. And by the time we got there, all the headlines in the news had already changed. And then we were wondering, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty amazing. So we had to figure it out. And I mean, obviously, God was good. And then just in May of this year, we went to Ottawa, and uh, I really felt like we got some business done there. You know, like God showed us, I mean, you know, Art, God was talking to Art about, um, you know, going there and contending, you know, and, and asking God how to just show us what to do as far as uh, the dragon that he saw on the peace tower. And, uh, it seemed to me that while we were there, God started talking about the, what we were dealing with was a you know a, part, a large part was the Babylonian uh, system that we're still serving uh, that runs government uh, it affects our school systems, business, our our financial system systems, our justice systems, all that kind of stuff. And uh, what was really cool was there was a couple of judges that were there that got on their knees uh, at the end of it, but they repented and asked for forgiveness for any anyone who was um, unjustly represented or mistreated by the justice system and they felt it was very, very powerful. And so now, uh, I, yeah, I felt like we got some business done. I don't know, what was your take on that? I don't think we've talked uh, about any of that since since we were there. Yeah, I mean, those were interesting meetings because you could feel the tension when you talk about the dragon where the intersection between faith and fear. So whenever yeah. we talk about serpents that are maturing into dragons, um, it, it can cause fear in the body of Christ. But, you know, authority has to do with the the not understanding the word, but understanding the timing uh, of the spirit of God getting his judgment with wind on it. And so God was clearly prophetically independent verifications of an opportunity, a Kairos moment to take a step in terms of executing what has already been established in heaven. And so those were wonderful meetings. Uh, Art Lucier started out with repentance and that always paves the way from a prophetic intercessory perspective for greater things. Because the kingdom is attained and executed upon, established through repentance. I mean, that's what that's what the kingdom is. And so uh, uh, yeah. those were surprisingly, from my perspective, effective. And we never ended up in any ditches, which was which was the yeah. beauty of what what was happening there. And so a, a lot of what we're doing in the nation is we step into these kind of divine moments accidentally because we've positioned yeah. ourselves through prayer and ceasing and we've said yes to the Lord. And so I actually, the dream that I've had a few days ago that, that um, 
I like to share on this call. Yeah, it'd be great. Confirms about this war that's going on in the spirit. So, um, Come on. yeah, <laughs> you've said a lot there, Bill. When it comes, to <laughs> let me let me say this about Quebec. There's Come a on. grace to do what I do in the nation. Come on. And, and so, as long as you stand that grace, and grace is another word for Holy Spirit, actually. So when sure. the Holy yeah. Spirit is on something. There's a win. Now, there is the natural side that happens. You do get tired from time to time. But I felt great uh, up until about two days before we called the meetings. But there was a real temptation because I felt that that we were really pressing into revival and Come shifting on. the nation. And I, I actually went before the Lord and I said, do you want me to extend these meetings even longer? Because what happened was we started to have an Asbury revival thing happening where yeah. people started to hear about it outside of our context. Now that was happening in the city and people were coming in off the street, healed, delivered, set free, um, salvations. It was incredible. And I thought, God, this is, I live for these revivalist moments. Yeah. Come on. You want me to extend? Cause I was hearing people from Germany wanting to come people from France wanting to come. Do you want me to extend the meeting? And, and the Lord said to me clearly that there was bookends. It was about the month of June being Pride Month, and that assignment was being completed, and there will be greater meetings to come in the future. And so out of obedience, we kind of wrapped up those times. But those were – a book was written about those times that we had in Quebec and has been released now. But those are markers in the spirit and offer mm. an encouragement to continue contending in the war for you know the fullness of the expression of the kingdom. Yeah, it was <laughs> – Pretty amazing. So uh, just a shout out to Debbie Buxton. Uh, you can get her book on Amazon. I, I haven't ordered it yet. I said I was going to it, but I haven't. But uh, powerful meetings. We were there for about a week. And uh, in the upper room in the oldest church in Canada, from what I understand. And uh, we just thought it was so prophetic. It was an upper room that held 120 people. And the glory of God just fell every every time we were there. Um, we saw some video clips of uh, before and after that was as may, uh, amazing or or even more. So uh, I, I really, well, we wouldn't do it if we didn't believe it, but we, we believe that these prayer strikes are actually causing things to happen in the atmosphere over Canada. Things are beginning to shift and move and, and, um, uh, the other day I was talking about, uh, I was on the reset yesterday. It wasn't that long ago. It seems like a long time ago. But many times the intercessors, uh, especially in days gone by, it seemed like they were 100 miles ahead of the rest of the church. They would see things in the spirit that they were contending for. And many times it was like they're in a state of emergency. And we're all going, well, we don't even see what you see. But the intercessors were out there kind of building the roads, plowing the ground, you know, uh, you know, doing air strikes so that the, you know, the ground forces could come in. And, and I remember some of the things pr we prayed about 20 and 30 years ago that we're actually seeing taking place now. But I do believe that there's an acceleration in things and God is speeding things up where, you know, like it was for you in, in, in Saskatoon. Uh, you contended for a week, and then within a couple of days, uh, everything was, was already shifting. I believe we're going to see a whole lot more of that. And um, we're going to be together in Manitoba. I don't know if we want to get into that yet, but I just kind of want to turn it over to you to hear uh, what what God is speaking to you about and, and uh, you know, any, any encouragements or teaching that you have for the rest of us, we want to hear it. I, you, I talk all the time, so I'm going to stop now, and I want to hear you. So sure. go ahead, Casey. Yeah, I, I mean, just to respond to this acceleration, uh, I would think that I'm a, somewhat pragmatic in measuring these things, and, it, it, you know, you go where you look, kind of. But I would say that, because I've been doing this a long time now, 30-some years, and Mm -hmm. I would say that objectively, and many of the leaders in the body would, would agree with me, is that the timelines are being condensed. 
you yeah. know, at the end of the age, the groanings and the the delays between prayer and answered prayer are are condensing, and so it's really exciting yeah. um, to see to see to see that right when you go in do a prayer strike and then it's in the news the same week. That helps build faith, but. Um, overall, I would say things that we've contended for 30 years ago, maybe took 10 years or 15 years, but now it's a year or a week. And so the yeah. Lord, I mean, we've been prophesying and seeing this great move of God in the globe. And so the hour is short. So let us, you know, let us, let us be like the wise versions and have oil in our lap and continue in obedience, um, to the things that God has for us. And, and uh, we've said many times, one of the greatest gifts that's being restored to the church in this hour is intercession, is standing in the gap. And um, it's just exciting that God is speaking so much, that he is on the move, and that there is a remnant that is willing, because that's the other remarkable thing. We make an announcement about a meeting that gets canceled, and still 100, 200 people show up. <laughs> to an upper room in Quebec. Like there is a hunger and an expectation that is pulling and putting a demand on the Lord to move. Yeah. And um, so let me share a few thoughts of uh, it's good to remember where we're, we've been and where we're going. Like you said, we're doing a prayer strike in Manitoba, the geographical center of uh, North America of Turtle Island. I do feel it's significant, but I'm going to kind of end our segment with the turning. Uh, sure, I, had, yeah. I had a dream uh, a few nights ago and I kind of rank dreams. Are they a personal dream? Are they, you know, a weighty dream? Is it a dream to be released now? Is it a dream to be released in the future sometime? And I really felt and I mentioned it on the reset for those of you that uh, don't follow the reset, jump on the reset because you never know what's going to happen on those calls either. And yeah. I mentioned it that I wanted to kind of take a little bit of time and go through because I believe it's going to be an encouragement for the intercessors uh, going forward. And I do feel that this is a high priority dream to release. So um, in the dream, it was on June 7th, there was a room that existed hovering between heaven and earth. Its width, depth, and height were all equal. It did not have any walls on the interior. There was a front and an assembly of people in the midst of this, in the inside of this building or this room. Two men were leading worship at the front, a man with a hand drum and a man with a 12-stringed guitar. The worship was going as I entered into the room, and the man on the... And just as I entered the room, the man on the guitar looked at the man with the drum and he he nodded to him and the man on the drum left the stage or the front of the, the assembly and went amongst the people. Hmm. Every time this worship leader at the front strum his guitar, the intensity of the glory of the Lord increased, the presence increased. And it was already palpable at the beginning of this dream. Wow. Trinity was in the room and he, they were everywhere. They were in the people. They were in the building. They were in the guitar. They were just everywhere. So often in dreams, I'll see Jesus or the Holy Spirit or the Father manifest, but he wasn't in form necessarily. He was just everywhere and in everything and on everything. Wow. The guitarless the guitarist rarely sung a word, but when he did, there was this jubilant echo from the people that filled the room. Wow. A First Nations prophet got up and spoke a single sentence, and an apostle immediately wow. responded saying, she has it. It's in her. She has it. Wow. I found myself sitting in the very center of this assembly in the sound of worship and exaltation to the Lord. And behind me was what I thought were intercessors, but it turns out they represented the great cloud of witnesses. Wow. I could not see their faces as they were transfigured already. 
the cloud of witnesses began to do a wave like you would see at a hockey game, you know, like a wave. And it was this ecstatic wave. I'm trying to put words to this dream for us. It was this ecstatic wave and it rippled through the assembly. All of a sudden, a very tiny door or window appeared in the back of the room. And myriads and myriads of angels entered the room to the point that it overwhelmed the activity that was happening in the room. I thought there is no way that more angels could fit into this room, but they kept pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. Then I heard a voice speak in the room and he, and the voice said the blueprint for the church in Canada is revelation 12. The angels swirled like a tornado at the voice and were dispatched with marching orders. And this was the end of the dream. Now say this in the dream. I didn't know what revelation 12 was inherently in the dream. Now many of the viewers may know, Oh, I know what revelation 12 is. Um, so I went to revelation 12 to, to reread it, uh, in the morning, but I have a couple of key takeaways from this dream that I would encourage the listeners um, on this. From the front, it was simple Davidic worship being released. It was uncomplicated. It was unhindered. It wasn't about light shows and it was just real simple Davidic worship. Number one, okay. the instrument had 12 strings on it, which represents governmental worship. The people, because it was odd to me in the dream, why would the drummer leave, like the percussion leave the, the instrument? But what the spirit was saying in this is the people already, we have received the drumbeat of worship from heaven. It's not just spectating. It's moved from a spectation, yeah. spectating into the hearts of people. It, that drum sound moved in the heart. So we have the drum of the sound of heaven. The Come equal on. sided room represents Ezekiel's tabernacle. The hovering between this room that hovered between heaven and earth was connecting the sound of heaven to earth. The first nations prophet that got up and spoke, the first nations carry a deep yet simple profound word in this hour for the church it's resident mm -hmm. in them it was confirmed by the apostle in the room wow intercession i happen to represent governmental intercession and intercession the prophetic the apostolic but intercession was yeah. and this was a curious thing to me because i thought that the great cloud of witnesses were intercessors with me but I sat in the very center of the room, not on the side, not on the stage, but in the very center of the room. Hmm. And it represents that governmental intercession is, is um, carrying the weight in this hour. Not about me. It's just what I represent in the dream. Right. The small door represents humility. Humility opened the door. This door was a little tiny door in, in context to this huge room that I'm in. This door is very, very tiny. The small door or the door on the floor, humility. Wow. And Revelation is the blueprint for the church in Canada. Now, Revelation, we know this scripture very, very well. This has to do with the dragon. This has to do with the war that's happening in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And let me just read, you can read this, you know, on your own at another time. But I'll read from, and we've quoted this hundreds of times, but I'll start in Revelation 11 or the second part of 10 or starting at 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ has come. Let the accuser of the brethren and sisters be thrown down, the one who accuses them before God day and night. And they overcame him, who? The accuser. 
because of the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not leave. They did not love their life unto the death. And so this is the blueprint. This is where we're at. This is a confirming word for the body of Christ. We have the authority. Uh, we are going by his marching orders. And authority is really simple, actually, at the end of the day. Scripture talks a lot about authority. But authority is having the judgment of God coupled with the breath of God. It's not our judgment against wickedness, but it is God's judgment with his breath, and we execute it. Let me turn to Psalm, Psalm 149. And Psalm 149 has to do with executing judgment, so this war against the dragon. So there's no fear here. There's only faith. So the godly one shall be jubilant in glory. They shall sing for joy on their beds. The high praises of God shall be in their mouths. This is what was happening in this room that I went to in heaven in this dream. And a two-edged sword in their hands. Now we can talk about Ephesians and all these other um, right. yeah. against flesh and blood. We put on the full armor of God. This is war. Um, but we are victorious. So a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment upon the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their dignitaries with shackles of iron to execute against them the judgment written. This is the honor for all of his godly ones. So that's part of our inheritance. Yeah, come on. That's part of our inheritance. We have this authority. We execute judgment mm. by being positioned properly and understanding Revelation 12 and right. going with the breath of the Lord. So all of these incidences or meetings that we've been having in this nation have to do with forerunning in the prophetic and intercession and seeing the execution of the judgment of the Lord manifested in the media, manifested in these different places. And so we're seeing the confirmation that this is indeed working. And what it's doing is it's creating momentum and acceleration in the spirit so that more and more and more um, judgments or declarations or decrees that are inspired by the Holy Spirit are being released in the land. Remember, I'm in the center as yeah. a governmental agent in this, and it Revelation 12 and this congestion of heaven in <laughs> is releasing the angels to do their bidding of the king. Amen? So Yeah, come on. That's good. That was an exciting dream. Because it confirms that the model that we have for this hour is mm -hmm. indeed working. The strategy of the Lord, Come the on. Canadian firewall, those that are standing in the gap in mm -hmm. intercession is having an effect in the natural. And, and so we become a, a catalyst for that which comes behind. So That's so good. Wow. I want to, because the number five has been coming up quite often. Take a breath. Hasn't please. it ever? <laughs> oh my goodness. The number yeah. five has. And so five years ago, we were in battle for Canada mm -hmm. and Edmonton intercessors, a small group of us standing in the gap, contending for this nation. And I remember we had what was called a strike force team at that time, a smaller group and a large group. The smaller group was getting together. And the Lord had given me an open vision because my primary language with the Lord isn't dreams. It's mostly visions, open visions. Wow. And uh, so I went into an open vision and I saw this giant domino with two fives on it. And it fell over in this vision. And when it fell, a double grace or double fives, it fell onto a newspaper article that said, enough is enough. Wow. 
I walk into the intercessor's room at the church that we were we had had, and on the floor was a newspaper article, and the headline was "Enough is Enough," and it was about the police in Edmonton and the justice, and they were like, "Enough is enough." And so five years later, all of a sudden, there's this swirl that's happening around a double portion, Come on. race, and I'm just prophesying and declaring over the justice system that there is a turning. Enough is enough. Come enough on. Enough. Amen. So you know, it's interesting at 5 a.m. this morning, we were praying about that very that very thing. The frustration of these guys that are supposed to uphold laws and the laws that they're supposed to, ha I mean, I don't know how what they think because they're, they're arresting good people and the bad ones are out there doing lawlessness. Yeah, it must be so frustrating. Wow, so good. K carry on. So, so good. So what does this have to do with Manitoba? Because I really felt like I'm not good at this, you know, advertising meetings and letting people know <laughs> what's happening. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm i like, I rather have five for us than 150 against us. And I understand that this style of intercession and, um, and um, is not for everybody. But there are those that it is for, and they should come to these types of meetings. So why is it? that we're going to Manitoba, why did we call it the turning? And so we go on these tours of duties, boots on the ground. I've been yeah. given by the Lord and confirmed by spiritual leadership, a certain level of authority in the land to contend, to stand in the gap, uh, to on. do these things. And so, we launched the Canadian firewall four years ago. We know that the number 24, the government of God, is a significant number in the year of 2024. So we know these things are already. We know that there's war. We know that God does these biddings because he's the Lord of hosts and angels go upon our declaration, our worship, our faith. They get enacted to do mm -hmm. the bidding of God. And so I just felt such a stirring in the spirit that the very place that we launched the firewall, the geographic center of North America, we need to get back there. Um, Come on. We need to get back there. We need to be in Winnipeg on the 24th as intercessors for this turning. And so by faith, I was like, I really feel not only is it a celebration for the Canadian firewall being four years going into the fifth year, yeah, but I feel on. that we've matured enough that we can start to reach in the spirit into <clears throat> the nations of the earth. And so I believe that what's going to happen in Winnipeg and in Manitoba will be a catalyst to see turnings and significant turnings AK enough is enough in many spheres, many mountains uh, across North America. Okay. I'm going to say now, Mexico. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, United States. And I'm going to say Canada. We're I going agree. to see fruit from these strikes. So, interestingly enough, the prophetic council of Manitoba reached out to me and said, Casey, we understand that you're coming with a team to Manitoba. We'd like to meet with you and hear, you know, hear what's going on. So I jumped on the call. Uh, they received me. Come on. They received me. And this isn't our usual MO. We go yeah. hit it. We go kind of like, look, this is what the Lord's saying. Unapologetic. Let's just go. If a hundred mm -hmm. show up, great. If 10 show up, great. We're, we're on an edge. We're a tip of the spear here, but this is a blessing. To be, And one of the things that dropped out of my mouth, and I feel to release it on this call, and it's just one of those nabby prophetic things that happened is, I believe God wants to deal with the monetary banking system and yeah. currency and the issues around wealth in Canada. And I'm like, this was not a pre-planned thought. It just 
fell out of my mouth. And I'm like, oh boy, what have I just <laughs> done here? But there was wind on it. Yes. There was wind on it. And ever since that, that meeting, I've been hearing more and more about, you know, the federal, the affordability crisis, the issue yes. with finances, the issue with this. We've had this prophetic word resting over um, the nations that the the wealth of the wicked will be transferred to the kingdom mm -hmm. of righteousness. And, and we've seen a degree of that, but I believe that there's yeah. more to be had. So we called it this turning we're turning and that has multiple applications come hey, on uh, repentance you know kind of that revival that we saw in wales where you know the two intercessors went out and prayed in city after city along the coast and um and uh the power of god would come into a region and people in their homes would just fall on their face under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Repentance, the conviction. So it turning <clears throat> away from this delusion and lawlessness that has been unleashed in the nations and uh, returning to, to the Lord. I also see it as a turning for those that for those areas that we've been contending in, the seven, the seven pillars of the firewall, for example, to see. Right substantial increase in the answer and the turning from systems that's a big word in this this season yeah. systems of darkness to systems of light and so to that end maybe i'll just i am um, last week of on youtube all of a sudden a word from tim sheets came up on it's a seven oh, yeah you can the word for June, and so I was already picking up these things: uh, upheaval, uh, unrest, a turning. Uh, but maybe I'll condense what he had to say. But and the reason I'm doing it is twofold. One, I want to honor the prophetic in America because I believe we're walking into with the alignment of the prophetic council in Manitoba. The blessing that we have, the alignments that we have with national leaders, I believe as intercessors, we're walking into a significant window of June 24th to June 28th in Manitoba that extends to America. So I wanted to pull in the yeah. spirit. I want to pull on what the Americans are saying. I don't normally look at the other prophets. I want to get a raw word from the Lord, but I believe this will encourage our hearts of what we're stepping into. And so Tim Sheets just released this. You can look this up on YouTube, the word for June 24. And interestingly enough, he received this word four years ago, which was around the time that we launched the Canadian Firewall. So we're coming into something here, church. Okay, so God is going to turn levels of the systems of evil on their head. Come on. Supernatural. This was all his language. We already named it the turning. Yeah. Supernatural reversals to hell's attacks. How many Come people on. want to call it? Oh, man, we Come saw on. hell's attacks. <laughs> Supernatural reverses to demonic attacks. Angels riding on the winds of change. Turning of the tide. The turning of the battle, Come the on. turning of the war, wow. overturning injustice, overwhelming the Leviathan spirit. Now, we've been really focused as a prophetic community on the Jezebel, but yeah. Jezebel and Leviathan often operate together. They have yeah. an unholy alliance, and this will be broken, and the Leviathan, the Leviathan spirit, which is that twisting spirit, lying spirit, will be overwhelmed. <clears throat> Come on. Angels are like fire tornadoes ripping the cover off. And in my dream, it the the angels, their formation was a of a tornado before they were released. Wow. Yeah. Tornadoes rip the lids off things they've exposed. Now, we all know on this call, 
We've been saying this, the foundations are being exposed, corruption's being exposed, but let's be honest, we have we know it, but we haven't seen it in the in the public space. I believe that part of what's happening right now and we're stepping mm -hmm. into is a greater level of the exposing. We're already starting to see in the nations of the earth the yes. unseating of righteous rulers and the unseating of demonic strategies that have been kept Canada, for example, exactly held hostage. We're seeing the release of hostages. Amen. Yeah, come on. It's good. Fire angels. This is Tim. Fire angels fueled by the decrees of the saints. Come on. Now, I want to just make a small correction to some of the culture that we have with decrees and declares. Decrees and declares are not something that make us feel good that we're saying. It's something that we've got from heaven, the perspective of God. It's his decree and his declaration that's being released in time with the wind, with yeah. the ruha, the breath of God, in faith. Okay. <clears throat> Leviathan will be overruled and angels will be throwing boomerangs. A boomerang goes out and it comes back. It's a turning. Yeah. Wow. The Ecclesia has requested systems of darkness to be dismantled. Oh, let me read that again. The ecclesia has requested system of darkness to be the systems of darkness. What am I saying? The systems of darkness to be against. Okay. The ecclesia yeah. has, let me repeat it so I get it right this time. <laughs> the ecclesia has requested against the systems of darkness that include strategies of darkness, plots, evil plans, schemes of dark governments, battle plans, power systems. That word is very important to understand. Systems, mm. power systems generating reinforcement of sin to destroy the will of God. God is going to overturn these things in this season. There's a boomerang effect. There's a weapon being released. Re the plans of the enemy will come back on them. Again, a turning, a type of turning. We know this from the scripture. Redemption is activated to liberate his bride. So we just prophesy and declare over the intercessors, the prophetic in Canada, those that have been under a season of darkness where you just don't feel that the attack is ever going to let up. We activate the liberation of the bride in Jesus' name. Come on. <clears throat> there are good. angels in alignment with orders declaring the king's ecclesia with boomerangs over governments, regions, cities, and nations. I actually, I, I misspoke a little bit earlier in this segment. I didn't know of this word until after the dream. I just saw this last night. He released it a week ago, but I I listened to it last night. I'm like, they need to know. The firewall needs to know about this. This is good, yeah. There is a divine reversal to the systems of darkness. Reversal, a turning. Yeah. Reversals of power, reversals of influence, and reversal of authority. Ready? Ready? Mm -hmm. Pride Arrogance Month. Arrogant leaders anointed by hell will experience supernatural reversals. Dictators anointed by hell will see their kingdoms reverse. Politicians anointed by hell will see their plans reverse. Billionaires anointed by hell to finance iniquity will experience humiliating reversal to wealth. Those who organize systems of evil to oppose me, says the Lord, will experience a boomerang. 
boomerangs upon media systems of propaganda, boomerangs declared against humanist education systems. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So this was spoken to Tim four years ago, the same time period that the firewall was birthed in the nation from Winnipeg. Four years later, we're going back to Winnipeg. Come on. The faith to see these things. <laughs> so the Lord spoke to him that there, there's going to be a reversal. The Your reversal. Okay, so four years ago, this is what God spoke to Tim, and he just released it again um, a week ago. Mm. This is to the enemy. Your reversal is planned. Your reversal is planned. Your reversal is planned. It's divine moments. So... <laughs> Let me speak. We did wow. an undercover strike in Manitoba. Nobody knew about it, but it had to do with the injustice around gender confusion and abuse of children. I'll just leave it at that. We mm -hmm. took communion in the city where one of the primary propagators of sexual abuse it was his home city oh that's he right literally took the communion put it in our mouths the blood of the lord remember revelation 12 the blood of the lord overcomes and the whole city now it's a small town granted the power went off in the <laughs> school that we're in and the whole city so I want to stir our face. These things work. It's not as complicated as we can make it sometimes. We mm -hmm. just step into these divine moments. Well, the thing is <clears throat> being obedient to how the Holy Spirit is leading because there's many people that just have this great idea and try to do those things and wonder why it's not working. It's key uh, to be led by the Lord in these things and know that you know that you know that you're being done. You're, you're doing this. Wow, it's so good, Casey. Keep going. So... Tim goes on to say, see visible public displays of undeniable reversals. That's what I'm saying right now. Come on. See visible public display displays of undeniable reversals. I've said it on this program, I think, in other programs. I've gone on the record. You are going to see Justin Trudeau removed from his office. Okay. Amen. That's I not agree. a judgment against the man. That has nothing to do. That has to do with a judgment from God to say, mm -hmm. I am removing him. So I'm just parroting what I'm seeing in the spirit. Come on. <clears throat> uh, I can, I have, I will. This is the Lord speaking. I can, I have, I will cause by ecclesia to prevail and to stand. This is another important word. Systems and standing stand god is anointing history makers new leaders he's changing history and he's pouring out his spirit to shake hell to shake hell anointing to come against systems of evil governments come on governmental up. systems of evil so what is a system the kingdom of god is a system there's principles in the kingdom of God. There is humility. There is repentance. There is honor. There's all of these things. It's So what is a system? A system is a set of principles by which things get done. So that's order. Hallelujah. God is restoring order so that we can be effective and efficient in establishing and propelling the kingdom of God in this earth. So a system is a set of procedures that are followed. There's protocol. Mm, it's an on. organized method of operations. It's a set of rules by which cultures, societal, societal orders, political order, financial order, governmental order, and banking orders are conducted. So I believe, because there's two places in Canada where currency or the monetary system, the fiduciary system are located, Ottawa and Winnipeg. Hmm. So we're going to be doing meetings in a church. 
but we're also going to be taking communion at the fiduciary or the financial system, a world system, because I believe God wants to break us out of a Babylonian system. Come on, there it is. Keep us in poverty all the time, and he wants to release wealth. Now, it's dangerous to say these things for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a total misunderstanding and ignorance in the body of Christ when it comes to the purpose of wealth. The purpose of wealth is simply this, so that we become a conduit, a river of finances to propel and resource the kingdom. Not a religious system, not our own retirement, but a, a advancement of the kingdom of God, which has direct implications of harvest. Number So it when we talk about finances, we get all kinds of odd things coming. <laughs> Would you remember in Ottawa, we touched on that very thing as God was been speaking about, you know, in that in that passage you were talking about where the dragon, he declared war on the woman. But but God took her and, and hid her in a place and provided for her. And, and then the Lord said, how do I provide? I said, through giving, like through people. He goes, exactly. And so we took up that offering. It was a small crowd, but it was a, an amazing offering. Like the people gave. And I, I talked to many afterwards that said, you know what? That was the very thing that I stopped doing because of the issues. And my story was, I, I told two or three stories about how God paid off debt supernatural when I gave. Uh, you know, got us out of some powerful things. So, yeah, amen. Keep going. We got about uh, seven minutes. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll try to. I'm just trying to stir faith at the end Ooh, of the day. You're doing good. I'm, I'm getting... So there's two pieces there. There is offerings, but there's also tent making. Yes. Right? So there's creative mm -hmm. ideas to resource the kingdom. And I believe God wants to restore and mm -hmm. reposition us in the creative so that that starts to unlock as well. Now. Yes, exactly. We just completed a... a uh, National Day of Prayer, all about repentance around pride and arrogance. Mm. I was given, um, blah, 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 blah. yeah, Genesis 11. Genesis 11 has to do with the pride of man, right? Where they built the Babel, pride and arrogance, Babel, Babel, and Babylon are the same synonymous word. But what's the root of that? That's the question. What's the root right. of that? So there's yeah. pride and arrogance. But what was happening with Nimrod was this. He was grumbling against God that the way that he thought that God dealt with his ancestors all the way back to Noah was unjust. Mm. That was the root of it. It was an unjust, it was an unjust complaint against God. And so in an affront to God, in pride and arrogance, I am going to, I am going to demonstrate my humanistic, my godlike nature. And I'm going to point my finger at God because of how I felt that God responded to my ancestors. There is no lie in God. He can do whatever he wants, however he wants to do it. The result of that was confusion in the people. I believe part of what we're doing in the financial mm -hmm. sphere is repenting for our ignorance, repenting for our grumbling and complaining, and to reset, whoa, to reset Come on. the conduit of blessings to the from the Lord so that we can advance his kingdom. So that's that's one of the pieces that's on my radar. Genesis 11 mm -hmm. has to do with that. Uh, I feel like there's some work to be done on it. And ultimately, Bill, we are going to posture ourselves before the Lord in humility. God, what is it that you have for us to see this turning? We know it's the desire of the Godhead to see a turning. We know that we're going to be striking the ground. We're going to be releasing a war cry. There's going to be agreement mm -hmm. in the room. We know that we're growing in authority and how to wield it uh, effectively. 
but we're just stepping in. What better place is there to be with those that want to contend for the kingdom and see a reversal of the systems of darkness, the tyranny that's in this, this nation. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And so blood wow. and Jesus cover us. Amen. Amen. Let's uh Hey, Mo, do you have that uh, poster? We'll just flash it up there if you wouldn't mind. And uh, this is just a little advertisement of where the Holy Spirit is going to lead Casey as Casey leads us down the garden path to victory. Just whenever you got it, you can just throw it up there. Uh, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to this. When you first started talking to me about this, I, I my my response was, I, I will be there. I'm going to bring my guitar. I'll be that guy in your dream. Absolutely. Um, I, I there's um, there's just a lot of wind on that. And uh, Tina Marie has been uh, watching this, and she has a dream that she she wants to tell us about. She's going to message it to us. And I'll forward it to you when I receive it. And uh, and this is the poster. It is coming up now. There it is. It's called The Turning in Winnipeg, Portage, La Prairie, Dauphin, Brandon. There's the dates. You can take a picture, or if you're watching the video, just stop it. And you get all the information there. Um, and you can also, it came, that poster came out with the Canadian Firewall Prayer Points. Um, look at that sword going into the earth, the water springing up, and a shock wave going out. Um, you had some background on that, the, the vision of that, I think, Casey. What was that, Jane Jones? Or, yeah, so our, our, um, Manitoba director Iris Waldner got a word from Jane Jones. I guess she's made it public. One of the right. prophetic voices in this nation, Jane Jones, and that inspired the um, the 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 poster. There's a lot. I'll say this to the to those viewing today or who's going to see it in the next day or so. Um, we prophesy in part. We know in part. I'm just giving a sliver today of what god is saying there's many dreams there's many visions there is expectation um for the prayer meetings in manitoba and so on a practical note i get this asked the time will they be streamed live nope they will not <laughs> number two is there a registration fee nope there is not um we will be taking up some offerings just to help cover costs for you know Bill and I and others coming out from other provinces. Everybody's welcome, but if speaking in tongues, warring, and making declarations is offensive to you, this probably isn't your your context. <laughs> and um, I mean, we said when we did Edmonton Intercessors, if if you're fearful, you know, if you're fearful, this isn't for you, and that's totally okay. That's not a judgment. Exactly. It's just not for you. I yeah. feel inspired by the Spirit of God based on my history with Him mm -hmm. uh, on these types of meetings. And uh, look, church, we keep striking the ground. We keep prophesying. The waters yeah. are coming. We keep groaning in the Spirit, and we keep yielding yeah. in Him. Humility really is about acknowledging how small we are and how yeah. great God is. It's what opens the window. Amen. So good. Yeah, we don't want to be like that king that only struck the ground three times. We're going to keep beating that sucker until the arrows are broken and, and victory is complete in Jesus' name. And I just want to say this, that many times God just, all he does is gives us a starting point, a little flash of what he wants to do. And then when we step on the ground, that's when heaven seems to open up and, and everybody puts their piece of the puzzle on the table. And then we just know that this is what we do. And um, I just want to say this, too. In Psalms, it says, you know, when you were talking about the releasing of the angels, they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. That is key. When we find passages in the Bible that are, are reflecting the, the conversation that is going on in heaven, we declare that word. The angels go, oh, that's the word. It's not only the sound of the words. It's the tone of the voice. And that sends them into work on our behalf. 
Um, Casey, it's so rich. We got to do this again very, very soon. Maybe next week. Um, uh, it's so rich, and I am so looking forward to this. We're a little over time. I don't care. It's so good. But Casey, just before we sign off, could you just pray for everybody that watches this, and uh, and then we'll finish with that. If you wouldn't mind. Father, I thank you that you, um, you, you, your throne is righteousness and justice, God. Come on. And Father, even as uh, contrary birds of the air, mm. side winds of judgment can come against uh, your beloved. Father, we break those off in the name of Jesus. Yes. All accusation against this mandate, against uh, your leaders. We break it off by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray <clears throat> that there'd be an increased um, understanding of dreams and visions. And Father, we just set upon um, these meetings in Manitoba, not that it's about a set of meetings, but it's about a divine time. We say yeah. that the table of the governance and administration mm -hmm. and strategy of the Lord rests upon us, rests upon your bride, that no I would be left not dotted and no T not cross. Father, Come. we thank you uh, this morning, this afternoon, whenever we're watching this, that there is a witness of the spirit of who mm -hmm. is to attend and who isn't to attend. And so, Father, by the Ruha of God, we say wind, blow wind upon this nation called Canada. Yeah. Have your way on earth as it is in heaven and dispatch that angelic host according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I chased you for a long time, and then finally you say, Bill, I need to come on. Good. <laughs> That's uh, The timing is so good. Look forward to uh, our next conversation, and even more so when we meet up in, in Manitoba. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming on, Casey, and thank you, everyone, who's been watching. For those who are watching online later, God bless you. Thank you for taking the time. This is all for you, and uh, and we will we look forward to hearing the report, uh, the testimonies of what God is doing in and through you as as all of us together uh, just put our equity. Yeah, you know, we link arms, and uh, we we just you know we we just stand before the Lord and say, "Here we are, God. We're an offering. Use us somehow, some way, and let's watch what God does." Amen. Bless you, Casey. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.